So welcome to uh, Rebranded number two, aka yeah. Four God Nerds Save the Universe God damn it. number two. <laughs> uh, I mean, is okay, it that Keith. much better Naming. than Smeg Cast? <laughs> I never agreed I, to that. There was no only G in there. there. Oh there right, it's a Smeg. If you put cast. a G at, if you put the G at it the, at the end of it, it's just Hob the Hobbit. It's it's Master. just the dragon. <laughs> Yeah, it's a smile. Yeah, Ow. and that, that that joke was already run into the ground by Red Letter Media. They spent every time the entire review just doing that exact voice of his name oh. over and over again. We're ne just just so we're clear, we're never even vaguely original. All of our jokes are stolen, intentional or otherwise. Mm -hmm. We're bad huh. at this. Um, I mean, I hell, we stole Birdcatcher. <laughs> Ow! I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just uh, I just searched Smaug. On Google Image Search, uh -huh. and I came up with the image of him from the old, uh, uh, the old Lord of the Rings cartoon or Hobbit cartoon, uh -huh. and he looks like Snarf. <laughs> I haven't seen this. He's got like a fuzzy Spock face. And I wasn't cartoon. ready for that. Oh, <laughs> that's an accidental <laughs> aside. So you've never seen the original <clears throat> Hobbit movies? Not since I was very young. Uh, I saw them when I was super duper little, and are we a, talking about the animated the, ones? We're yeah. talking about the 1970s Ralph Bakshi. As a kid, I uh, hated movie. it. I only oh, wanted to watch. No, I found. I if you Google want... cartoon Smaug and look at like entry number four, you wind up on Deviant Art, and wow, it looks like <laughs> a cat. Yeah. They definitely... Oh, yeah, I remember this now. Looks like a cat. You know, it I'm does. actually pretty okay with that appearance. I thought there was something weird about the, something. Uh, the more recent yeah. Hobbit one. It looks like something you see in the lab. Like. Oh, uh... Keith, I apologize. You're gonna have to use your audio for, like, two... You fuck. The first two minutes of this. Don't worry Again? about it. <laughs> it's fixed. After, if you look at Cartoon Smog uh, uh, from DeviantArt, he looks like a wrinkly hot dog. <laughs> oh, no. As, as a kid, hot dog from 7-Eleven that like hasn't been bought for like a week and a half. <laughs> for some reason, as a kid, I never liked the Hobbit okay. cartoon at Seriously? all. Like I only enjoyed the uh, the Hobbit, the uh, Lord of the Rings one. Now that I think about it, um, I don't know if I have seen the the hmm. Hobbit one. I may have only seen the Lord of the Rings one. Yeah, I don't remember that smog. Yeah, the Hobbit's not all right, one. All right, so shall we uh, shall we get into some of our topics for today? Shall we? Dragon. Oh. <laughs> is Shell gonna? Is Shell gonna like uh, uh her stuff now? I assume yeah. she is in the background however, right however, now. <laughs> Keith, <laughs> Keith, I'm gonna do a horrible thing now. And come oh god! Recording. Now what are you doing? What are you doing? Yeah. What are you doing, Wander? Are we? Are we gonna have technical issues in both? <laughs> <laughs> oh, two I, I, okay, it's fixed now. I was Look. Just when your computer blue screens and your entire Scarlet fries in the middle of a podcast, you cut. Oh God, I'm being. You, you got to ease yourself okay. down and only have minor technical problems in the subsequent <laughs> yeah. podcast. Yeah, you do. You do. Otherwise, it's you'll okay. go cold turkey too fast. I yeah. I, look, you you gotta you gotta get it out of the way first, and you. It's like getting sick. It's like um. <laughs> It's like a small Yeah, you just gotta throw up a whole Except bunch at the start of getting had sick. Polio. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. Uh, if I ever uh, take medicinal advice from you, don't. I no. Just, You're gonna yeah, die. Just don't. You just, you just have Please for the first me. and last time. <laughs> I, I value most of our relationship enough to tell you, please don't. <laughs> most of our. What's the part that I you respect don't you value? enough to tell you never listen to me? I uh. I don't appreciate your fake fart noises. They're very unenthusiastic. Oh, oh! Just you put me on the spot. I didn't have time to practice my fart sounds. Well, so what? Okay. So I've been having a hard time making them. We were today. playing Gmod last night, and I told Bird he needed to start making enthusiastic fart noises, and his performance was uh, lackluster. But at best. was it enthusiastic? <laughs> no. Oh, why did you fail, yeah. him, Bird? I don't know. All he did I was, was ask was you to sick. force enthusiasm on a moment's notice. Okay, they're, I was they're just, gonna go. I wasn't on feeling well. I wasn't able to fart as <laughs> well as I normally can. What? <laughs> your, your dedicated chair microphone. I was planning on just taking the microphone into the bathroom and just pooping and doing no. that. But then I decided, no, I wasn't going to do that. I mean, considering how much people appreciated it when we were playing... Uh, Quiplash, I'm sure the toilet humor would have gone over just fine. That's that's, that's too literal. It's too literal. It doesn't work that way. <laughs> yeah. 
So, uh, do we want to talk about the the eye sigil, as it's been called, or do we want to talk about like we um, could, yeah, we, we could discuss talk about the whatever energy. this is. Sigil? Yeah. All right. So, uh, there is a alternate reality game going on right now, and like every other alternate reality game, nobody has a clue what's going on. Uh usually it's like usually with args, it's always like some marketing thing. It's always building up to like. We're gonna release this new thing in like six months, and like we're gonna release this ARG like a couple months ahead. Uh, and we're currently in that phase, right? We can't figure out like what this like weird marketing campaign is like getting at. Seems to be that's marketing uh, for buying indie games. Yeah, maybe. Maybe yeah. they're just like trying to advertise like a whole bunch of like because I mean, a lot of these indie games are super obscure. Okay, that actually yeah. gives me a topic for after this one. So yeah, sure. let's okay. hold okay. the segue after. Oh my, okay. Uh, okay. So, for background... So what Wander wants to warn us about is that at some point over the next hour, he's going to want to talk about a thing later. Yeah, no, 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 we'll, no, we'll remember it. with the ARG. I want to talk about indie game marketing. <laughs> okay. Uh, so oh yeah, I've we can talk getting, about that. I, I've been getting a lot of exposure to uh, indie game developers whining about marketing. And it's uh, really yeah. familiar. Yeah. Huh. Okay. Anyway, so, uh, in... Jan like uh, in January of 2016, apparently, like, I'm just okay. reading off this image right now. Uh, this weird like symbol was put into the game's data files, and they basically have found encrypted that the this Necrodancer. symbol encrypted the Necrodancer. Did I say that? No, I don't remember. No, <laughs> was, no, you oh, just okay. said for the games, and uh, it's like for okay. Crypto the Necrodancer specifically, they put this weird like sigil. And then uh, people were like, this isn't used anywhere in the game or something like that. And then uh, people have been playing a whole bunch of other games to try and find other mentions of it. And uh, they found a bunch. They're up to 15 games now that have this uh, sigil accessible in some way or another. Can I just say that that's impressive that they've managed to organize 15 games for that? Like, it so, makes sense that they probably can do that. It's not like yeah. the old Wilhelm scream where people just are using it. Uh, it's... no, it seems more coordinated than, no, like, an inside joke, like Wilhelm. They the all Wilhelm. fit together as one yeah. puzzle. Yeah. Ah. I would, yeah, I would so... suppose that the people pro behind them probably just all know each other and they're... Just sort of doing yeah, this little thing. These as connections a, as, are so tenuous, though. Yeah, but it's probably just one guy has to know a guy, and a lot of indie people yeah. probably have connections just to figure yeah. out how to even I mean, survive. It makes sense. I imagine. I imagine that's completely true. I imagine that's the I, case here. I know here. a ton of like I know a ton of YouTubers, and yeah. like I could probably get them to start like to throw like an Illuminati type thing in like a description of a video somewhere. I just mean, to yeah. work with people. I mean, there's mm -hmm. already uh, there's already a Discord group we know where. Half the members are using one person's face and hiding it in their thumbnails. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. Yeah, actually. yeah, that's a real thing that's happening already. Who is that? that Who's is the, the face again? This thing too, oh. Sir Crest. Yeah, so Sir Crest shows that's up great. with like Drake Crest and uh, and Weasel Zone's <laughs> like thumbnails at random and stuff like that. Uh -huh. I mean, he's made it into uh, two of mine now. <laughs> nice. Like nice. Yeah. So, so uh, it's that easy. It, you just it need was Discord. first discovered in. Um, Crypt of the Necrodancer. But it seems that the first in, in the first case of it might have been Kingdom of Loathing back in 2014. Yeah, so it's a it's a it's very recently discovered, but it's like old. So Kingdom of Loathing put it back in put it in uh, October 2014, apparently. This and, the overall uh, the overall diagram looks vaguely like a circular maze slash electrical yeah. diagram. And no one so, knows what it means, but little pieces yeah. of it are hidden in random games where at some point mm -hmm. in the game, you'll find the symbol that looks vaguely like a hand sort of thing yeah. with a circle mm -hmm. on its palm. And near that, in some way, that makes sense in that particular game's case or whatever, there's some kind of puzzle or action to perform that will give you some sort of hint at what that piece of the puzzle is that's in that game. And mm -hmm. so far, they've spawned, they found pieces of this diagram that all fit together from 15 different games. Oh, yep. Which is insane, so but King also what is it? <laughs> first one and kingdom of loathing is this with the spiral that reminds me it's, of mist Ooh. it does kind of remind you of mist doesn't it it's super mist like because just well, a weird thing in uru there was yeah. the hand you exactly used it to get waypoints and stuff it's like yeah, getting pieces I, of a puzzle of a, where we're uh, pieces of a solution where we don't even know what the puzzle is yet <laughs> yep so it like stood out, it stood out kingdom to me just because loathing we is... played we we played moon hunters a long time ago me shell and wander 
Uh-huh. And all three yeah. of us ran into this exact thing. It's this this weird palm hand statue thing. Wait, it's in Moon Hunters? Yeah. Really? It we is in Moon Hunters. We, we interact Two players with players yeah. perform a pose while standing on the sigil yeah. to obtain it. It was a weird statue looking thing where we could not figure huh. out what it was or what it did. And we just left, ultimately. But it was a weird, yeah. it was a weird old, like, metal-ish looking ruin. Like, something that almost yeah. would fit in with, like, uh... It would almost fit in with, like, Hyperlight Drifter or something. And we just had to move on because we couldn't figure out how to activate it. But yeah, that's just, that's just there. And mm-hmm. so, like, that's, mm-hmm. it's just that's been cool. showing up in everything. And the most recent one would be Quadrilateral... Oh, did, you, did you just paste it in? Like, Quadrilateral yeah. Cowboy just came out, like, yep. this week. And it's in that, apparently. And no, no one solved it yet. <laughs> So that's yeah. number 15 on an ongoing list of, I don't know, going towards who knows what. <laughs> and a lot of these games are really, really pretty obscure. So like, uh, like, uh, Mini Metro list? is pretty obscure. Yeah, sure. Uh, I will paste that into the, uh... I'll just read no, no, it for no, the audience. Yeah, so the yeah, games in question oh, sure, sure. so okay. far are Crypt of the Necro Dancer, Mini Metro, Legend of Dungeon, The Magic Circle, Neon Struct, Moss Speedrun 2, Flickers, Soko Bond... Um, Moon Hunters, Soda Drinker Pro, Bella, <laughs> Bella Lore Hexatosis, Slide the Shakes, Souls of Darkness, Kingdom of Loathing, and Quadrilateral Cowboy. I've heard of four or five of these. Yeah. Soko Bond's from the guy that made cr- uh, the Chem game, right? Isn't Soko Bond from the, the Infinity Factory slash Chem Peter. thing game guy? Uh, I don't know. I can check. And then uh, Crypt of the um, Necrodancer we've all played, I think. Magic Circle yeah, is a game yes. about playing through an unfinished game yeah. while it's still being developed. Magic Circle, I think of all of those, Magic Circles and quad- Magic Circle and Quadrilateral well, eh, Lateral Cowboy definitely sound like the most appropriate for this sort yeah. of weird shit. Quadrilateral Cowboy is mm. the newest and I think largest game from somebody who previously made games that you had beaten like 40 minutes and there were these weird like Quentin Tarantino style odd like silent artsy non non-linear like movie games where he, i don't even know how to explain his last two games and, like king I of loathing's a browser game bond. oh Dracnek. okay so this isn't uh soko bond isn't uh isn't a zachtronics game oh so it's not it's not uh it's things. not like um space cam or anything like that what have i done but like what the hell is soda drinker pro i think like, it's i heard it was meta or something like it was supposed to be like it's one of those games like Frog or Fractions like, or uh, Pony uh-huh. or something where it's like, whoa, crazy happens or something. Or like Sonic <laughs> Dreams Collection. I guess some brand yeah. of like almost, like half YouTube bait, half you won't believe what happens in this game. But right, never... so it's basically like an I Am Bread type of thing. Yeah, but I don't think it took off nearly as much in any direction as that game did originally. Uh-huh. Looks like it might have a total of 40 reviews. Okay. At yeah. first, I cringed a little bit because I was I was worried that it was Soto City. Oh but, but no! They it, don't want to. But I realized it was not. <laughs> oh yeah, that would god! Be, that'd be a hard hard. Yeah, we have, we haven't mentioned with. Soda City, but we should explain why our reactions are oh, so yeah. intense. Okay, so quick quick tangent. Soda City is indie game platformer. Looks awful. It looks is awful. Pretty it came awful. out. Sounds. I awful. I want to say about a year ago. Uh, on Steam somehow, I guess it got pushed through the green light process, probably via key bribery, I don't know. Probably. Um, it's a game that's a but, running joke to YouTubers just because we've all had our inboxes basically spammed by their very aggressive marketing campaign to get people to play it on their channels. But everyone looks at the game and goes, no, no. Yeah, I got, I think yeah. I got like 15, 16 I keys. I got about, I got less keys than that. But I got I got like fifteen emails, each yeah. of which with the same key. Exactly, and it, yeah. it probably says a lot that everyone in our entire circle knows about this game and has been pestered by this game. But on Steam, it has a ground total of seventeen reviews. Oh, like no one bit, no one took the bait. I think I would have only ever taken the bait if I was still doing sad games, basically, because yeah, this maybe. is the type of thing that we would just yell at. Yeah, <laughs> it just looks like. I the mean, you guys that... did fucking the Seal Club game, yeah, so. Club. Smash the seal. <laughs> God, that That's, was awful. That channel was about playing this kind of bottom of the barrel, like uh-huh. uh, low effort indie game. Mm-hmm. I'd say. Yeah. Whoa, wait. So what was the whole seal thing about? You weren't actually m- murdering yes, sea you were. lions, were you? 
Yeah. <gasps> That's okay. It was a low effort, shitty indie game. Oh, that yeah. Never made it, it was anywhere. made by edgy ass people who sucked. It was a really bad 2D game where something that looks like whack a mole happened, but little seals would come out and you try to kill them. And they are, oh. their website featured a uh, shocking amount of merchandise considering no one will ever care about their game, including a thong. And it says, uh, "Yeah, a, a thong I know. that has that a, was gross. It's a thong that has the seal icon coming out of a hole on the front of it, and it says Smash here." I, yeah, I, I it was I, made I, by just, real assholes. I predict their entire just... line never sold a single product. <laughs> Why Probably, would yeah. Want want to wear that Smash? I guess thing? nobody so wants to wear it. I guess. <laughs> yeah, someone wants, nobody someone ever wants to sell it. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! Wait! Uh, wait! For some reason, I was assuming that the thong would go on a guy. I should know better. It was clearly meant for a woman. That's terrible. Yeah. Yeah. Now I get it. Think, think, think more objectifyingly. I was just thinking of, like, smashing a dude wearing it, and it's like, ouch. That no, would be, and then no, I'm like, it's... Oh, no, it's no. meant for a woman. Uh, that sounds like Japanese daytime television. most thongs are. <laughs> <laughs> All Japanese right. Japanese daytime. So... What? Um, uh, back some... onto the arc, though, because we kind of didn't... <laughs> We kind of didn't finish our point after the two tangents, so <laughs> that looks like a transformer. Well, that's the thing we don't have. We don't, don't necessarily have more to talk about. Talk about the thing. Well, we do. We do because uh, you and get these sigils, cool. and then the sigils uh, also like reveal images or something. Let's see. What is it? Uh, oh, oh, the sig the sigil's presence indicates the location of a puzzle, and then uh, if you solve a puzzle in the same uh, proximity as the sigil. You get like this weird image, which you can then uh, put together with all the other images in all the other games, yeah. and it creates like this map. And that's what and I was talking nobody about. Nobody knows that looks that like map it looks is. like a weird like circular maze slash electric electrical diagram, basically. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and that's, and all, that's still all missing, we have, though. We're, we're still missing um, about like six or seven sections of it. Unless we find but out this is the core, and it's also like seven layers longer, and it's actually yeah. five hundred indie games. Oh god, <laughs> that's like a, increasing. You know that's like what you Fez know what would, was like. <laughs> you know it's what would drive the internet what if nuts? this is announcing Fez two? That would be hilarious. <laughs> that would that be, really be funny. amazing. What if this Honestly, is Frog Fest okay. two? Mind. Okay, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna this? bring us back to uh, what if this diagram is No Frog Man's Sky? Two? <laughs> you want to go to No Man's Sky? No. Yeah. What, why? If, what if, like, you get to the center and it's one of them? One of what? Oh there's, wow! There's nothing at the center. Oh. No Man's Sky. They just like. This is essential. Uh huh. What if somewhere hidden in the galaxy of No Man's Sky is just a piece of this diagram? Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> Somebody finds it like three oh years down the line, God. and suddenly the entire thing just turns back on. It's like. <gasps> but the interesting thing is, like, is there? Did they pre-make all the pieces of the diagram and just distribute? Yeah, it looks really. It's just a line. Absolutely. Absolutely. It looks. It looks. Too well put together. It's just some lines and like circles. Not. It's not yeah. a big deal. Yeah. But, like, there's there'd be no way to, like, have every indie gamer try to come up with their own section because, like, there's a ton of overlap between a lot of them, too. Mm. So you get, like, this circular section, and then, like, there's a lot of overlap between all the circles. So you have, like, a lot of redundant pieces. Yeah. Um, yeah. But nobody but knows, like, what these like symbols correspond to they don't know like what game to do this in it looks yeah. like a, it looks, it looks like, like, like a, a solution that you'd want to do in a p specific game uh-huh you know what i just kind of thought about something because uh uh shell just made the point to say that it looks like miss what if it comes into play oh, in like abduction oh yeah i i could i could totally see them having <laughs> like uh gotten mm -hmm. the cyan worlds people to um yeah it could be not even yeah. not even have a piece of it. What if the solution is actually? What if it's actually a solution for a puzzle in abduction? <laughs> <laughs> or because that's, oh, that's, that's you know what? <laughs> I'm I'm really disappointed. Uh, I I didn't hear. Um, okay, uh, your game, Keith, the one that you did really well with Island Mist. Like, totally forgot the name of Witness. it now. Witness. The, the none of the none of the symbols are in witness, right? No, yeah. no. I, I don't know. That feels I kind can't... of like a wasted thing. Yeah. What if I don't? What if think when you solve the puzzle, would let anybody get into their game? <laughs> no, no. Jonathan Blow won't let you do that. No. But what if? What if when we solve the puzzle, the person that solves it 
uh, gets to be the main character in the next in the in uh in the next um video game by uh, Peter Molyneux. No, <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, might, he might get lynched. Yeah, yeah. something that just reminds me of weren't, wasn't there uh an a character or two in the original Walking Dead that just happened to be winners of some kind of oh yeah, a number of zombies were yeah, competition. lots of zombies. Well, no, but remember that oh, one lady that thinking, actually no, no, got no, no. she was a teacher who actually you're, got you're torn thinking up. of the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. the uh, the first Walking Dead game. All of the people uh, that helped you get into the school, if I remember right, mm-hmm. uh, were people that like won a contest, which is actually really nice of them. But they get yep. torn apart. Oh yeah, they all die. Of course, <laughs> Walking Dead. What did you expect? Uh, I don't know. That that game does I, not I have a very when... long list of survivors. <laughs> no. no, it doesn't. <laughs> I I just I especially hate it when whenever the zombies get someone and they just start tearing their entrails out. Oh, ew. I mean, it happens Gross. sooner or later in the process. No, I know that, <laughs> but it, it's always the first thing. I swear. Oof. What if this all? What if this entire puzzle puzzle just takes us back to Smash Seal? Oh God! What if they like reformed? What if the thongs and... are the key to all of this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did they just, just a release big... a thong with a sigil on it? It's just a big circular diagram, but all the circles are code for Smash here. Uh, or no, no, no! Like when you put it all together, like seals start popping out of the circle somehow, and it's just like Smash a Seal too. <laughs> Confirmed. Jesus Christ. No, no. What, what are we I'm anymore? Thinking, like, what if we went to like uh, the GDC and like some like that you saw like somebody wearing a thong with like the sigil on it, and you went up and like had to solve a puzzle with them. <laughs> they are the puzzle. <laughs> yes, they're the puzzle. And then they take you into a secret chamber, and like you go in, and like there's a council of like Gabe Newell, um, uh, what's his name from Blizzard. Pop, pop, it starts with a P. I don't remember. I feel like our speculations uh, primarily ex- uh, explaining the fact that every ARG's conclusion ever has been the most disappointing thing. Yeah, like I'm not oh, gonna yeah. care ARG about the suck. actual answer when it happens. Probably, <laughs> unless no, it's actually a production, then I might care. <laughs> but yeah, yeah the chances every... aren't super high. So the first ARG that I can think of that didn't suck. Was um, watch like, it, watch it be Halo's? like a hidden message. Halo's the uh, first one people like talk help. about. Yeah, the uh, the the bees one. Yeah, oh, I love bees. I love thing. bees. Yeah, that was a lot of people's introduction oh, to the concept of a uh, of a of an, of an I've never Heard of that one? It was a hidden message uh, in the Halo Two trailer that went on for a while and kept yeah. hinting at things. I don't remember caring about its result very much. But it was no. It was like it involved it didn't going make any to physical sense. locations and calling phones and all this other crazy stuff going on. Yeah, it was something like you there. There was like a hidden message in the trailer, and it took you to a website called I Love Bees, and it oh, was supposedly I like that. it was supposedly like people like a like a hacked site that was like I love bees. Bees are great. And then you look at the source code, and it's like everyone must die and stuff like that. And you're like, "Oh, there's something weird going on here." And then, yeah, the game kind of spun out from there. <laughs> uh, like people had to like do things like go to certain locations to answer payphones at certain times. And if you uh, go to I Love Bees right now, it like says that. halt module core hemorrhage. Control has been yielded to the system peril distribution distributed reflex. Countdown mm-hmm. to wide awake and physical. Yeah, I, and there's just some massive countdown to some ridiculously far away amount of time. Make your decisions accordingly. Yeah, this accordingly. is probably when, like the this is when the Halo is supposed to be Haloing the best <laughs> the distant or something. Future. Yeah, and this, just, it looks like there's probably it says like mission log and stuff like that. So I assume that this is like the credits. Evade, like, who evade, what evade. For the arg. MIA. Oh, MIA is the is the credits. This is all the people that were involved in making it. <laughs> recruits. These were probably a. Uh, I don't know what the recruits section is. Maybe it's all the people that played. Yeah, I don't know. It has a weird, yeah. like itchy, tasty type comment on its page saying "shaking, waking." <laughs> yeah. At any rate, like there was um, oh man, 
There was a game I'm trying to think about that was released by EA where, like, the ARG wasn't being done for marketing purposes. It was just a uh, game in and of itself. And you had to do things like solve a murder mystery while, like, they were faxing, like, stuff to you with phone numbers. And you'd call oh. those numbers and it would say, and there'd be, like, pre-recorded messages being, like, from characters in the game, like, who would talk to you. And uh, it was super duper unpopular because it was extremely <laughs> clunky. And um, a lot of people were oh, like, this is dumb. Yeah, it was kind of wasteful of a lot of resources and stuff, too. And uh, it was also really short. You could beat the game in about 45 minutes. Uh, and then that predates a lot of this ARG stuff a little bit, like, for marketing purposes. And I guess that probably the people that, like, I was really say innovated that mostly on this doesn't concept. doesn't sound like what an ARG tries to accomplish. Yeah, they. I think that after this game kind of failed, they kind of retooled what they were doing with ARGs and made it into mostly a um, marketing thing. Mostly where it's just been sounds like an interactive relatively phone successful. call thing. Yeah, pretty much. Like, kind call like that man one... on the phone. It'll no, no, save dude, it's, it's like that one whatever. Game. <laughs> it's like that one game from the 90s where you, like, went on dates and you, like, the mystery phone. <laughs> oh, no. Whoa, what? Oh, God. Mystery phone was a board game, like, marketed to women, like, young girls. And it was, like, really? you had to figure out which boy had a crush on you by talking on the phone. And now they're all dead. And it was an automated thing? Yeah, or it was, like, actually? it was, like, a fake phone that just, like, played, like, uh, sound effects when you press buttons on it. And it'd be, like, hey, I'm Chad, and I like you. <laughs> Or like, you, I think you're a really <laughs> special girl and stuff like that. Yeah. Weird. <laughs> you never Weird. heard of it? Stop hitting on my fiance. No. It's not okay. Hey, Shell, Clearly I think you're not. a really special girl. <laughs> <laughs> They're trying to boost Gross. self-esteem. Yeah, it was like... You might as well just know. play the middle by Jimmy World over the phone. <laughs> just cut out the middle, man. Do you know what this reminds me? It reminds me of... um. Oh, I, I've seen it in films before. I forget which one precisely. Mm -hmm. But there was someone that took up a job being one of these girls who I suppose guys would call just to have smutty conversations with. And that was that was all that they did. And, of course, they paid the telephone, whatever service it was, money for, like, the girl's time. I think that's like a that's, relatively real thing. Yeah, that's, that's like, not a real. Have you ever watched TV past yeah. like midnight? It's you just like, watch late night TV. Real like, girls live. Yes, I mean, exactly. Phone sex lines what? have been around for forever. Yeah, that's absolutely yeah. a thing. Yeah, I used Remember, to watch Comedy Central all the time about. in high school, and if you were just on at like midnight to two or later, like all night, it's just like, hey guys, you want to call this number? You can talk to real girls and stuff like that, and it's... By the end oh, of the 1980s, that's, that's... nearly all of the major local phone companies in the United States, plus the major long-distance characters, <laughs> were involved with adult chat lines. Look, like, here's here's the how, creepy thing about that, though, is often... that no one buys huh. rent for that. No one buys, like, commercial space for that time of night, except yeah. them, Girls Gone Wild, and uh, Sarah McLaughlin puppy commercials. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a really fucked up juxtaposition between the two. Is like call real girls in the arms of an angel. <laughs> angels. It's like talking about like Ethiopian kids and puppies dying everywhere, and then uh -huh. like and then phone right. sex lines. And then like, <laughs> like we are eighteen. We are looking to talk to you. So. Uh, and but no, the you, interesting you thing is, wow. like watching watching television. You do see so many commercials aimed towards things akin to Viagra, or just plain, like, Viagra. It's just like, and they always have this woman being like, hey guys, you know, and it's just, ugh. It's like, be ready for that special moment. But, like, I, the ones where they actually have, like, guys hanging out with their ladies doing things like fishing and stuff, like, that I think is all right for those commercials, even though... Why? Why those commercials all the Can time? Can we go back to talking about the ARG? <laughs> okay. Oh, I, I, really I, I always got I kicked out of the I really don't. I talking about boner pills. I always got kicked out of the commercials that would just have literally a series of hands pointing at actual wood. <laughs> that was imagery <laughs> they would use sometimes. Stupid, like whistling is right like, up there with the one where the guy that had the stupidly white smile. 
Whoa, I remember that. Yeah, How do I remember I that? That's something. crazy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Probably uh, happened during some Super Bowl. You just taught me how dangerous uh, freaking advertising is. <laughs> yeah, really. Well, yeah, and the themes stick with you for ages. I know that there's one um, insurance company. Or not insurance company. I think they're these uh, crash lawyers. You know, everyone's getting in car accidents nowadays. Uh, so they had a different phone number. But because of the jingle, I remember their old phone number rather than their new phone number, which is strictly one number across the board. So I, I still remember the weird mixed up mangled system of numbers, but the new one just doesn't fit with the jingle. Just doesn't. Like the car insurance commercials? I have no idea what you're talking about. Sorry. <laughs> Um, so... You're talking about, like, the, you know like the indie band that would do, like, a song for each commercial about, like, their car insurance oh, or whatever? Oh, those guys, yeah. Yeah, Oh, yeah. man. And so there would be a jingle associated with it, and they would sing the phone number to call. That's Except right. Since since they've had that, they've been able to somehow buy out a phone number that had just one number going uh -huh. across like seven 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 you know yeah uh -huh. <laughs> but it just i remember the jingle so i remember the old number and it's just like why do i know this why <laughs> there's also a jingle for every single like mattress or home improvement store and yeah it's on it's on television and it gets to you do you know what's one thing i don't see anymore kids toy commercials it's because you don't watch Cartoon Network. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, that yeah. there's demographics for these things. Yeah. I mean, have <laughs> right. you ever have you ever watched it now as an adult, though? It's, like, so weird. It'll oh, be, like, shit like, like, kids, buy the latest awesome. And the next yeah. commercial is, like, All I like, remember is commercials yelling at me. Have you considered insuring your home against tornadoes? <laughs> and it's just, like... <laughs> Why is the what? Yeah, I suppose I haven't been watching Fox Kids anymore like I used to. Uh -huh. As a kid, yeah, toy commercials just... sounded like like monster truck commercials. Yeah, right. they do. Like all new, buy, oh, buy, buy, squeeze it to put out the <laughs> <aisle. laughs> mm -hmm. Just you like shouting in like low voices for no reason. Yeah. Just no nonsense. Bugs? Uh, that's what I haven't seen that in ages. <laughs> kind of. Wait, wait, so you have about. seen Bio Bugs? Yeah. But, like, yeah, I watched I it, like, one. twice, and I was like, oh, that's not for me. I, I have the red one. Of course, I was, like, really little when I got them, and but all my friends had one. So yep. it was the closest thing we had to, quote-unquote, real-life, you know, battling robot animals, I suppose. Yeah, and, I think uh, I had a blue one, and I could never get really? it to work. Uh, you see, so the blue one was Stomper. Mine was red, so it would have been called the Predator. I suppose uh -huh. they were supposed to have different stats, like yours yeah, was supposed, supposed to, have to be behaviors. especially strong, mm -hmm. uh, and mine was supposed to be exceptionally aggressive, I believe. Uh, but yeah, yeah, so they they have the antenna, and if you woggle the antenna too much, they freak out because they're like, I'm bumping <laughs> into something, oh no! Uh, and uh, if you ever set two of them on each other, one of them would have its antenna battered into submission and it would go backwards while squealing. And the other one would have a like an electric guitar rock dance going on and go beanie, meanie, meanie, and it would just wiggle back and forth with its legs. We are now trapped in the uh so, so their nostalgia. nostalgia power. Yeah, hour. they're, they're like ro cool. they're robot bug like Beyblade Roombas. Yeah, exactly. Well, That's so they, exactly they, how you can they, describe they, them. They walk around, they bump into walls, and if they realize they're bumping into something, they back up and they go a different direction. Yeah, yeah. but you can level like them up. AI. Their, yep. their eyes would uh, change colors depending on how many victories they had uh, experienced. Oh, yeah. So, like, Get um, those kids stuck on the Skinner box early. Oh. <laughs> Get them set up for a gambling addiction later. I mean, that was the era of Tamagotchi. So oh, like, yeah. Well, yeah. Tamagotchi and, like... I dropped, mine in, I dropped mine in the robotic sink. Robotic pets. What? Probably a good plan. My Tamagotchi was doused. Oh. <laughs> nice. I never had a Tamagotchi. I had Koof a terrible his Tamagotchi, tamagotchi yep. ripoff that McDonald's had, you know, had in the <laughs> Oh no. So it was just, it was just about a static image. Tamagotchi. Uh -huh. It was a static image on a Tamagotchi-like uh, device, but it wouldn't do anything. 
Yeah, you just have so, like a, basically a keychain, a Tamagotchi keychain. These types of yes, conversations I, always I, make I, me feel like a weird kid because I don't think I played with toys as a kid. Like yeah, just in really? general. Really? Like I had video I, games really early, and that was that was about it. <laughs> I, th- I had a lot of toys. Uh, I mean, at first it was like Disney play sets, but then there were like these little dogs that you could got, bet, get a, buy at the 7 Elevens. Mm-hmm. It was interesting, they were tiny little plastic dogs, and they had like a house and everything that you could get for them. But then later on, yeah, I'd gotten into Bionicle. Uh, I've obviously had a lot of Beast Wars Transformers, specifically the trans metal ones. They just don't make toys like they used to. <laughs> like, nah. the paint jobs, the working parts, the, the plastic. Wow, there's not too itself. much else to toys than paint jobs and working parts. So. <laughs> <laughs> No, no. And radiation no, like, and lead poisoning. The models, the functionality, <laughs> and the dreams. <laughs> what? Nothing. <laughs> what they do is they murder smaller children and infuse their dreams directly into the toys. That's the magic. Yes. Oh man, that's actually a very pointed commentary on like child labor <laughs> that I'm not willing to get into right now. <laughs> uh, I was hoping, I was actually hoping able. you'd pick up on that. <laughs> yeah. No, that's sadness. So, uh, All like, right. I, as, so a, as, a kid, as a kid, I'd watch commercials where two boys, like, like have, like, Ninja Turtles toys, and they're smashing them together and shouting and shit. I'm like, I don't understand. Even as a kid, <laughs> I'm like, I, what, are you, what are they doing? I don't understand. Mm-hmm. Who, who's getting points? <laughs> I was already yeah, playing, like, Duck Hunt They're just supposed and, to like, use their imaginations, and yeah, you don't I have never, one, I never really. did. Yeah, literally, right. my, a lot of people in- me playing with toys was having an RC car, and it was one of those fun ones where if you flipped it over, it could just keep going. And that, that's like that was we toys had a for me. Little one, damn, and it broke. The Stuart Little car just broke. Oh, yeah, and Stuart Little was, was a like, thing. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, we had the remote control car of Stuart Little, and it doesn't really run run well anymore. That's sad. Just like Stuart Little. Because he would be he would be dead by now. Yeah, very dead. Take yeah. that, li- rat lifespans. <laughs> <laughs> uh, All right, Wander, you had a you had a topic you wanted to get on to okay. about so, indie uh, game marketing. <laughs> yeah, uh, sort oh, wow. of. Yeah, I I, but I, children's toys. I, I, no, when we it's, when we buy when we buy children's toys for the podcast, we can discuss children's toys for the podcast. Um, <laughs> it'd be a great visual topic for all the stuff that where none of us can see each Binox. other. Yep. Yeah. Uh, but so, so I've been going on the. I'm not even going going on the game dev subreddit. I just it's there, and I will uh, occasionally like read threads out of sheer curiosity. Mm-hmm. Um, Same here. Mm-hmm. And some are some are good. Some are. Kind of bad, but uh, I, I guess to preface for a lot of us, I guess everybody here but Shell, we all started on the Let's Play subreddit. Uh-huh. Uh, in fact, that's how I met both Bird and Keith. Uh, though I didn't start there, though. No, but you were you were on their IRC, and that's how I met you. Yeah, and then you found me completely separately, not knowing you already knew me, and then contacted <laughs> me about stuff. I I don't know how that happened, but all right. I've explained um, it. It's pretty straightforward. I just I browsed an IRC for a little bit, mainly related to when I was going through a problem with uh, the Smash of Seal people going after me for copyright stuff, and mm-hmm. then immediately after the word that never really came back and didn't remember any of the names on the list of people talking. Mm. I just, Fair enough. I just didn't record in my head who the people's names were in the chat room, so I didn't think I'd ever encounter them again. But, uh, but apparently, I can count so, all of them again forever. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but so, um, let's see. So we all started on the Let's Play subreddit, and one of the biggest issues with that place is a lot of like small channels being like, you know, how do I, how do I, how um, do I become Markiplier? Yeah, more or less. A lot, of, a lot of people that desperately want to be a large YouTuber. But either don't put the time and effort forward or any number of things, really. The funny thing is I hadn't even heard of Markiplier until, like, a year ago. Well, which is you're also... poor Markiplier. Yeah, poor Marky. He's really hurting. Um, yeah. <laughs> He'll just cry into his money. <laughs> <laughs> his... Uh, 
tons of money. <laughs> it is a lot of money. Um, but so, uh, out of curiosity, every once in a while I'll read threads on game dev, and I've noticed a just I'm not even going to say a disturbing trend, it's an unsurprising trend lately, of almost word for word the complaints that Let's, Player, Let's Players use from game developers. And I always assumed that game development was like a little bit better... Uh, understood, you know, you actually have to have a marketing oh, budget, you actually so you're have to going do into the, the game dev place and seeing people all the same trends of people talking about not being discovered and stuff like that, and how... Yeah, it's oh, like, yeah, no kidding. Because mm -hmm. everyone, because so like, if you've ever been into Let's Play people in the audience, the entire Let's Play subreddit is completely filled with people who think they're absolute geniuses that have never been discovered for how high quality their content is, and how special they are. Yep. I mean, this almost harkens to, you know, people who way back in the day had very low budgets to make B-level films. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. and that's how you got things like American Graffiti and stuff, where you know, budding actors coming off with their like first feature films, and you know, then they become huge stars with something else. Yeah. But, uh, what were the two threads I was thinking of? Uh, there was one where a developer had put up a, um, uh, a screenshot of specifically what happens during a Steam sale, and it was like <laughs> very low flat line, bump, slightly bigger bump, and then back down to the exact same flat line. Uh -huh. And the so they're attributing Steam sales to sales. Yeah, I mean it was sales, but they made less money. But people knew about it and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Um, and so it was kind of like the uh, discussing the the merits and the detractions of you know a steam sale it's actually amusing um, how much uh video game sales sales for an indie game can look a lot like our own analytics of like how views go oh, absolutely. <laughs> and like yep. what, we yes. can see little spikes when certain memorable things happen for the channel and stuff like that yep um but one of them actually that i remember seeing was an article uh that was being shared from kotaku i think or whatever mm -hmm. uh an interview with the people that made the game Brigador. Now, I haven't played Brigador, however, Keith has. Brigador. So he can tell you if Brigador was any good or not. Um, but they were talking about how, like, they had spent, like, four years developing it. And it was, like, three people. And it, like, failed miserably. And, like, here's kind of why. And all this stuff. And I was sitting there reading this article as one of the people that had legitimately been looking forward to it. And it maybe I'm a bit guilty because I never bought it. But they sent me my press copy for it two months late. Just like, to be they clear, responded did, to my email uh, did you two say Brigador? Later. Yeah. I literally have that article open right now in front of me. <laughs> yep. Yep. They, they even have a thing where they talked about their early access. It shows their, their sales history and it shows their early access launch. One specific spike for the Giant Bomb unfinished episode they got. Like a mm -hmm. their Giant Bomb feature. Just flatline all the way up until like a recent post they made explaining why the game's twenty dollars, which came out like six months later. And, like I even played the game right at launch, because uh, I got a code right away, and I was like, "Yeah, this seems neat. It's like it seems like somebody had a vision and wanted the game to feel a really specific way, and it looks a really specific way, and it like it feels unique, even though it's like a top-down shooter. It feels like you're driving these." heavy tanks and there's like v collisions and like collapsing buildings and it feels like a weirdly like it uh -huh. feels like a weirdly weighty simulation even though it looks like a 2d uh top down game and it uh, it looks oh, like so it's a mech warrior like yeah yeah clone yeah it's really yeah, it's actually like a really interesting concept in the game um but save for like a little bit of here and there they uh -huh. have no marketing Oh, yeah. And no, like, PR outreach, period. Right. I had actually spoken with them several times before. They even knew who I was. Like, I, they knew I was a YouTuber and I was excited for their game. Um, And I think I'm still salty about this. But it's it's just surprising to see, you know, not, not just these guys, though, talking about their indie games flopping and not really knowing why. And everybody's like, well, how much effort did you put into PR? And it's like... Well, I just put it on Twitter and YouTube and stuff like that. It's like, <laughs> no. Yeah. Like, no, no, no. Uh, I made a video get... nine months ago, and for about six months, it was on the actual front page of just searching that mm -hmm. word on YouTube. And no, now, you gotta. Like, so there's just nobody if else. If you're marketing a it. game, if you're making a game, you gotta get it in the hands of people that to play it. 
Like, that's, yeah. like, the basic rule of, like, marketing video games, at least, like, nowadays. Oh, yeah. If I remember right, most AAA games' marketing budget is, like, 40% of their whole budget, or it's something oh, yeah. really big. Because there's yeah. so much competition. And there's yeah. tons of competition, and, like, it takes, uh, it, the, 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 you have to, like, make millions to, like, really be successful at the indie game level. Like, it's not yeah. enough to break even with the next Call of Duty. Next yeah. Call of Duty needs to make like two hundred million dollars, like stuff like that, because that's how they can yeah, it's move forward as a company one. to like, yeah, fund well, the next isn't one. Isn't at this point considered triple A, so that's what they expect. Yeah, yeah. And Br in Brigadero's case, it was extra tragic or disastrous or a mistake or whatever, because after like four years of development, they launched right before E three. Yes, and yeah. just so like sealed their fate. Attention. I was the and only... I mean, that's the one thing you can really control. Like, you can time your launch pretty well. Just yeah, you just wait a little bit. I Wouldn't I think they, they just launched when they were done. At E3? Which is a yeah. terrible idea. <laughs> you have to time your market. You need to release way far away from E3. Way and far the Steam away. Sale. You cannot. No, be not close never the Steam sale. The summer sale or the nope. Christmas sale. I've I've run yep. into several developers that thought, oh yeah, yeah, I'll just put it up. Like it's July the worst 4th. idea. Literally, no, the front never make page of money. Steam completely changes, so you can't even see what new games are out. <laughs> yep. Yeah, like, I was actively trolling the new games listing just to see if I could find something cool. Because and you'd be the only person to notice really it. Good games. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but like, the games that did come out during that week, like some of them were legitimately good. They have like shit views because nobody even knows they exist. Oh yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. There's legitimately cool stuff out there that no one will ever notice. And no That's Kotaku sad. article is going to fix that, unfortunately. Yeah. No, it's really not. It's like... a fun story that goes on the front page of uh, Imgur and stuff like that, and Reddit and everything for a bit, and then tomorrow it's forgotten again. Yeah. Which, which get... begs the question if people are really being like small fish in a big pond more so now with the digital age and global interconnectivity than if you were, say, a young entrepreneur in a, you know, 1800s town, etc. Uh, well, the video where, games weren't right. around in the 1800s, so yeah, you really I'm have no competition at that point. About, like, let's say that there was, like, a singer or a performer or actor or actress back then. Yeah, that's where you get the bubonic and then problem solved. Ugh. No, I don't mean that. We basically had two <laughs> things change at, back to back. Uh, there was one one thing that happened is that the moment the internet took off, exposure skyrocketed. So anyone who was already doing stuff around then, bam, uh -huh. suddenly had a massive exposure. But then shortly after there, a lot of different industries had, especially entertainment related ones, had their barrier for entry drop. And that meant that everybody flooded in when was doing the thing at the yeah. same time, when whether they were good or they're mm -hmm. bad or whatever you want to say about like how competently programmed Minecraft may or may not be or something like mm -hmm. that. But like a lot yeah. of people could suddenly make stuff and yeah it's that like makes it really hard it used to, to get be out. like the unreal engine costs like three hundred thousand dollars to license yeah now it's free Whoa. and like your average person can what name like your average person can probably name like maybe like 20 let's players total and can think of like five indie games that come out a year probably but yep. there's thousands of both yep and you can't you can't see that or know it's happening until you try to make either of those things and then see that, oh, right, I'm invisible. <laughs> and then your Brigador, uh, a mech shooter I, that took a ton of know, work and was just a listing on Steam that sank to the bottom of the list and then was forgotten. One thing I That's wonder, sad. going off of that point, uh, a lot of, like, I mean, a lot of YouTubers don't watch other Let's Players. A lot of game developers are too busy to play other games. I wonder if uh, part of the part of the problem is they're literally not aware. Just like you said, there, they are not aware of how much competition they have. Oh no! And there's no they, way to know. Then they find out after the fact. I mean, there's plenty of ways ways to know, but obviously, but you have to have you have to know. Too much you attention. kind of have to know in advance about the concept of that being true to even know to look to know. Yeah. I I think that the most common thing about thing indie game development is people making these things and then just thinking they're going to succeed because of course they'll of course their game's gonna get purchased by people, right? They don't they don't yeah. need that many sales to make to break even, right? And then I they find out what say, happens I when none that, of those sales happen <laughs> at all. I think that there's also this issue where uh 
in the indie game scene, a lot of people believe that if they make a quality product, the customers will just come to it. And, like, that sometimes happens. Like, Stardew Valley, zero marketing, and uh, it's a cop. It actually had more marketing than you thought. Really? Uh, it, was also tied to, it was also tied to Chucklefish, which was... Oh, uh, that's true. Uh, ...is a substantial amount of marketing, even, like, by itself. That's true. Um, and, I mean, I, I'm just going to keep throwing praises at it for a bit. Uh, Stardew Valley also released in kind of a our market void... It did, uh, exactly. Har Harvest Moon has been... Uh, I'm not going to say a failing Oh yeah, wow. Game. Stardew Valley is tied Seriously? to like Risk of Rain and Starbound's company. <laughs> yeah. That's no small Chuckle thing. <laughs> yep. Yeah. That's, that's what confused me about Brigador. Is what I, was, I was surprised with something that took that long to make. I was kind of surprised they didn't try to reach out to somebody. Or maybe they did, but I'm just surprised they didn't end up with a connection to... Some publisher like Adult Swim Games well, or the sure they the, probably what, did and decided not. What's the oh, other top publisher. indie? I see. What's the other indie one? That Devolver, does, Digital? Devolver Digital. Devolver Digital. There we go. Mm -hmm. Like I was, I was surprised that kind of game didn't end up with one of those companies because it seems to I'm be. I'm sure they probably got an offer and then didn't take it up. I on don't it. know. I don't know. Devolver, <laughs> Devolver publishes quite a lot, but like yep. they actually don't take anyone. They they actually have kind of a yeah. Uh, but, baseline quality. I'm just saying, anyway, the, the, the weird thing that the, the thing that's specifically weird about the release of Brigador is that it has that level of ambition and like fidelity to everything and and like mm -hmm. vision to it, and, and then that that made it all the more surprising that it's not attached to anything at all. That no mm -hmm. no one picked them up to make the make that thing go somewhere, which kind of makes me wonder if they didn't yeah, network at all. Maybe not. But uh, uh, it apart is a, from it is... the subreddit, not really. There's a belief in the indie game community that, like I said, like if you make a quality game, like the customers will come to it because that's kind of what a lot of indie game successes feel like if you're not paying attention. Like, which is not, yeah. yeah, it's a like, self-fulfilling like, prophecy. Braid that was hugely successful. I don't remember any commercials for Braid. It's like the definition uh, if of I confirmation make as good bias, as Braid, right? Yeah, they're like if I make something as good as Braid, which of course I will because, because I'm that's an awesome game before. developer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I think the problem is there are two ways people make it to the top. One is you become viral and that's the way everyone hopes things mm -hmm. will go. Like suddenly they're noticed by everyone and they just skyrocket and that's it. They're done. They they have everything made. And then there are the other people that really have to put their nose to the grindstone and work, you know, hours, days, months, years, etc. every single day. Yeah, just toiling with the hopes that what they're producing will eventually get that notice but the way that they actually acquire the fan base is because of their consistency and the work that they do put into it and sure it's slow going but eventually they make it there but yeah i know that i notice that a lot with artists too because i mean obviously being an artist myself and working on the deviant art community and other places there are people that i mean they could have been working at a AAA company for years and then they're relatively obscure when they get on the scene, but then they have this amazing artwork to show and uh, they aren't noticed up until they really start creating that fan base all over again. And then there are the people that have been toiling from the bottom and they make something of themselves with oh, a webcomic or a series of illustrations and such. and. Sort of like YouTubers, you have people that are millionaires from that as well. Um, and it's just really interesting seeing how how similar those fields are in general. It's it's actually, I, I mean, art, like you just mentioned, game dev and like YouTubing. And like I heard her talking about art and I was thinking, it's like, yeah, this is pretty much just exactly what I went through. Because you have watchers, huh. you have subscribers, you have... It's just every field that's entertainment related where the actual barrier for entry and exposure is super low. So everyone, or quote unquote, everyone is doing it, which is why no one can really break through in reality. Interesting. It's that thing yeah, where like a little, people... A well, no, no, it's like, it's, I'm not saying that literally, like, literally no one gets out, but it's just, the, it's this mm. sort of thing where every time there's any just breakout hit good, in any industry, successful. people only see the success, and they don't understand that that person escaped from, like, the threshold of a mausoleum. 
Yeah, pretty much. Where like hundreds of that other is... people did not go anywhere. That did almost the same thing. It's a damn good metaphor. There are talented people who sit in the corner and do nothing work their forever. Ass off. Like no one yeah. finds them. They either work their ass off and nothing happens, or they squander it one way or another, or they don't quite market themselves, or just they just get unlucky. Like I, I get really weirded out when I look at subscriber counts for YouTube channels that I've been following for years and see that I've passed some of them. <laughs> yeah, and I'm yeah. like, oh, uh, that's how big their channel's been this whole time. I, I don't know. You guys, you're, you're half as don't... big as Aaron Signal. That okay, that's weird. Yeah, that's right. Weird. They only have eighty k. He only has eighty k. I was, I was gonna mention. You know, sleep cycles, right? Uh, the guy who's kind of like overshadowed my roguelike career for like years. Yeah, you what you, you have like ten thousand more subscribers than he does. I, I got ten thousand more than him. Yeah, yeah. And a yeah, Aaron Signal sitting at eighty eight k right now. I, I didn't even know until we started playing together, and yeah. then, <laughs> then we were talking, and he's like, "Yeah, you passed me." I'm like, "What?" And so I looked him up after the fact. I'm like, "Oh, that's just a darn shame." Because like I really I really like sleep cycles, and it's weird to pass people that like. I respect, but mm -hmm. it, with YouTube, is it really subscribers or is it views? It, I, I it more views. than double him in views. Because I couldn't understand how subscribers would kinch you a more um, stable fan base in a way. Because you're guaranteed nah. to have more of those people see your film, sort of. I mean, the but more subscribers you have, the more that... potential exposure each individual video gets. But you have to be constantly appealing to what they look in interested in or they won't even try to look at any of the right. stuff you're uploading yeah right. like, and then there's a lot of people who don't care to subscribe to anyone yeah but they're still watching like yeah. there's a, like, the, did, the, like, like the old example we've always had was that with sad games we had a absolute takeoff series for uh tokyo jungle and yep. every time we uploaded a video of that series Within 24 hours, it would already have a thousand views consistently, and we could take mm -hmm. three months off between episodes, and somehow the moment it got uploaded, everyone would click on it. So, like, clearly these videos are being delivered to people, but if we, say, went back to our usual stuff of, like, shitting on Sonic games and stuff like that, the video would get, <laughs> like, 50 views. Yeah. And, like, the gulf was massive. Like, you have to... It's not enough just to get subscribers, you have to actively appeal to those people, or they just will not click on any of the things you're uploading. Mm-hmm. And that's I suppose it must be difficult for people who, I mean, you guys were talking about branding, at least with the title, but that's beside the point. Um, people who accidentally find themselves thrust into ni niches that they didn't intend or want. Well, I mean, or enjoy. Let's, that's let, a hard let's, one. Let's talk that's about the story like, of a Let's uh, Player, of every Let's Player, is that yeah, you upload videos like, and some of them accidentally take off that you don't expect. And then you find yourself wondering if you need to appeal to that demographic. Or keep doing what you're like, doing. My most popular series slash video ever was a Patreon monthly uh, series. <laughs> uh, Let Never Leave Sanctuary was something I read about when Fallout 4 came out. And I was like, oh yeah, that's a neat idea. I'll probably never do it. Or like, maybe I'll do it someday. Because at then, the time uh, you didn't I'll even be... like Fallout 4. No, so I was like, I why, would I, why would I play Fallout 4 <laughs> for a challenge now? It's like, yeah. as, <laughs> yeah, right. as, as far as games go from last year, Fallout 4 is actually probably one of the most disappointing to me. Yeah. Just yeah. because mm. it's such a All mishmash of All of us have terrible opinions ideas. of that game. Yep. I'm the only uh, one that finished it's such it, a... though. Yeah. It's true. <laughs> so I have unique uh, such... and extra opinions to also not like it. <laughs> um... I get a lot of people who are really angry at me for not knowing what I'm doing in Fallout, and I'm like, I, I just don't care, man. <laughs> it's not um, my... You all came to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, uh, like, literally, Omni in my chat came up with it. And yeah. uh, he's like, hey, you should do something like this. And I, like, modified the idea a little bit to match the article I read, you know, years ago. Um... And now it's my most popular thing ever, and I'm like, well, I guess I'm just stuck with this. Hopefully other people still like my other stuff, though. And, like, to some degree, yeah, but the crossover is surprisingly low sometimes. And it's always yeah. it's a hard thing to reconcile sometimes, because, like, with sad games, we would mostly play bad games on purpose and Sonic games and stuff like that and just screw around and have fun with that, and then Tokyo Jungle took off. With you, for years, like, you would almost exclusively play, like, roguelikes and indie games and stuff like that, but a huge emphasis on, like, all these permadeath games, because you love it to not having to do a continuous thing and just stopping after every session and everything. 
But yeah. <laughs> for a while there, you, some of your most popular things ever were like Holy Potatoes, a weapon shop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and Scrap Mechanic. And none of these things tie into like the thing you were doing with all the other oh, yeah. videos on your channel. Yeah, the, the original core concept of like what I do is broken and missing. It also hurts. Oh, yeah. It hurts specifically to be tied to one genre, though. Um, which is why I'm kind Hurts of happy to be tied to one both. game. That's yeah, exactly. really rough when you're in that position. Um, like, uh, I love Scrap Mechanic, but it's going to be a long time before I find an alternative to it because there's nothing else that catches my fancy. Yeah. yeah. Um, or and, uh, like, Rocket League Terratech. for a lot of people was, uh, yeah. was uh, a big, oh, yeah. like, sink. Or, or every Day Minecraft Z. person. Well, <laughs> Minecraft has at least some good alternatives. Like, if you can make the crossover to uh, Terraria or Starbound, that kind of helps. Also, at least Minecraft um, doesn't seem to age. Yeah. Yeah, weirdly. I mean, it's like yeah. Legos. It ages very slowly, but... Yeah, I find it interesting how I could spend hours and hours on fully rendered digital paintings. Uh, not only of my own original pieces, but also, like, the very rare fan art of, like, a character that I adore. And some of them, sure, they would get the views and stuff, but the ones that have the most views are my quick, like, monochromatic sci-fi armor sketches. And I go, what? Why do people <laughs> like these so much? I, I barely spent any time on them. Easily digestible content. That's yep. why uh, people like CNANers, for example, exist uh, in the YouTube, like, arena. Take um, that, CNANers. <laughs> I mean, no, no, no. CNANers <laughs> has, like, a lot of other a lot of other merits, but specifically CNANers is famous, not because of his long-ass um, uh, Call of Duty videos that he used to do or anything like that. For some reason, when you say CNANers, I always think of bananas, and I don't know why. I because mean, of nanners. Yeah. Yeah. He's of the nanner yeah. part. He's the nanner of the, of the, the sea. Bananer. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> but, like, I think he specifically got popular mostly because of, like, a couple of Gary's Mod G-Mod. things a long yep. time ago. Yeah, yeah. his, like, and uh, now... his, like, um, uh, gassy Mexican doing, like, the voice acting the Morgan Freeman G-Mod yeah. thing. The I can see oh, you sorry. thing. sorry. Do I need to be closer to the microphone? You. Oh, yeah. I can smatter you. <laughs> no, I can't do it. Yeah, Doesn't matter. No, nope. nobody can. Microphone. He can. I just like sitting in my yeah. chair. <laughs> I can but um, <laughs> uh, well, uh, that doesn't beat my Murloc impersonation. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of things you do that sound like other people, that's the exact sound that Jeremy from Achievement Header makes when he goes into beast mode and uh. Every time in in a uh, Grand Theft Auto Five, he sounds like a Murloc. He makes that exact sound where it's like four, like four, three or four consecutive like weird like gargle roars. <laughs> <laughs> you just you are you, do you have like a chip in your brain that's slowly downloading internet stuff that you're not actually watching yourself, but it's like incorporating itself into your behavior. Apparently, and you're just like leaking out like Bumblebee trying to talk in the Transformers movie, <laughs> like just entirely through Damn. other people's actions. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, that Actually, was a sick ass <laughs> reference, bro. <laughs> yeah. Wander and I have a language that we only use in the presence of one another, and rather not talk about the this. language of love. <laughs> uh, do, 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 no, I really want to talk about this. <laughs> Shell, you're a very special person. Go. Um. So <laughs> when I was young, I absolutely loved animals. Absolutely loved animals. I, my uh-huh. friends and I would pr- we would pr- like pretend to. Be animals like the whole Lion King thing. Remember how I broke my collarbone in third grade because I was playing Lion King on the playground? Yeah, I remember yeah. that. So, uh, in any case, uh, I just found it convenient to relay my emotions with mouse. I literally called them mouse. And uh-huh. I actually had a sci fi comic book that I had done in fifth grade. It's really cute. I want to go back and redesign all the characters and stuff because it was just. You know me, I'm too serious a person. So my character was, like, the really stern captain of the ship. And then my friend wa- who had, like, co-written it with me was the complete ditz. And then we had our various alien friends. And one of them looked like, um, oh, what was Agumon's smaller form when he was just, like, a bouncing head thing? Oh, no. Do you remember? Chibi-mon. Like... <laughs> well, right. So Kickball I played Pokemon like I- everybody I else. <laughs> There was, we had something very similar to that, and his name was Milo, and all that he could say was, Mao. 
And there are different types of mouths. And uh -huh. I, of course, had figured out how they would sound. And then I actually started developing as like a form of communication because there's like meow and then there's meow and meow and all these other different types of mouse and uh and if you want to get someone's attention you go meow meow and if you want to do a sultry one you go meow meow you know like various weird things uh so uh -huh. in any case there were the mouse and well, my mother I'm looked at me get a cookie <laughs> What's up with you? <laughs> I don't want to be here for this. <laughs> I feel like a year down the line, we're going to find out about how Mao's been incorporated into the bedroom. Wait, oh. what? <laughs> no. Don't go there. And any scare case, them both away at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> so the top camera mother... of the podcast will just be empty. <laughs> yes, it is. It is, at least with Wander. Wander's gone. He's embarrassed. Um, that is fine. So, it's fine. so uh, my mother, this was like middle school, high school, whatever. Like, first off, everyone thought I was never, ever going to have a boyfriend because I was just staunchly against the idea of dating because, ew, boys only want one thing kind of mentality. And I was like, no, I'm above all that. Well, in any case... So my mom looks at me and she goes, Your poor sheltered Michelle. childhood. <laughs> she, she goes, no one's ever going to date you because they don't want to hear you making those weird noises. Like, I can't even understand what you're trying to tell me or, or say. And I was just like, but, but I like the Mau Maus. So I start dating Carl and he had this thing where he likes me being indignant. That's what he say. He's just like, you're cute when you're indignant. So whether it be like a random poke or a tickle or who knows what, if oh, I... you know what. What? Chat. <laughs> chat. Specifically Wander's chat. I want you to remember this entire conversation forever. <laughs> and use it. Why? This needs to be night bonded. We need a Mao command. Because now there's going to be Fucking... Mao showing up in chat. <laughs> and I love that. Uh... <laughs> uh... <laughs> So, okay, continue your story, Shell. And, and I would make... So if he was being annoying, which he is, everyone knows that he's super annoying. He likes to torment people, usually in a hilarious fashion, but he just, regardless. Even uh, if he's so, the only one laughing. Right, precisely. So you, That just means he, you need to light up. He liked embarrassing me and stuff. And I would, I would go, hmm, hmm, like, hey, get away from me kind of stuff. And he's like, those noises are cute. And that's that's how Mau Mau's are adopted. And now, <laughs> hopefully, Mau Mau's will exist forever. Though I don't know if they will now. All of Wander's chat right now is just Mao and Cat Kappa. <laughs> I need to I need to uh, pop up pop up pop into the Wander chat real quick. <laughs> I have to see this. All right. no, now keep, no, no. Now keep we, this up we, we for about six the, months. We don't do the E's, guys. No <laughs> meow. It is just I mean, mouth. their average age is about fourteen or fifteen, so a lot of them are going to do it wrong. You yeah. just have to get. You just have to accept that about Wander's chat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're not a subtle crowd. Yet, that's actually no. how we greet each other in text messages <laughs> oh my God, too. It's going so. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. So you just you just go meow with a question mark, Jesus and that's Christ. how. What? <laughs> I'm just watching chat right now is just a nightmare. Oh, oh, wait. No, you're spelling it the wrong way, bird. It's not like, you know, Mao, the dictator of China. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. What is it then? <laughs> it is literally Next time we play a strategy game with I'm you, Wander, right. like if we play Stellaris or something, you have you're you're gonna have to name your main character General Mao. <laughs> I mean, I don't actually know how to how to twitch him out. There we are. Got it. Got it. <laughs> oh, this is my new favorite thing. <laughs> Wait, what's everyone's favorite thing? <laughs> no, nothing. Don't worry about it. It's, it's nothing. <laughs> and nobody, nobody likes anything about anything. It's fine. Yeah, we, we're all very spiteful people. Yeah. <laughs> oh wow, they actually put a Mau Mau <laughs> night bot Fucking... thing. <laughs> yes, it's spreading. We're ruining. Uh, we are just ruining Wanda right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
I have cookie dough. Well, so he has cookies, so it's okay. I, I was I was proud when I could go back to my mother and say, you were wrong. I found a man wrong who likes my mouse. You're wrong about- <laughs> All the mouse. <laughs> There's 117 people in his uh, audience right now. And, and they're it's going, fucking nonsense. And they're like, oh, mow, no. mow, 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 mow. The sad thing is, this is probably going to have a resurgence in like a year when I have like 700 people or something like that. Yeah. Or and if you get if you ever get problem. really famous and you have your own like subreddit and stuff, someone's going to dig up this podcast a year, two years down the line. <laughs> it's going to become an, uh, it's going to research itself over and over again. <laughs> Uh, sorry it's okay wander it's the best problems to have wait so how do we get to talking about mouse uh it doesn't matter do we even want to try to backtrace that from there (laughs) something about brigador and failed dreams (laughs) yeah (laughs) we're talking about failed indie games okay so i'd actually like to go back to that topic for one more thing i don't know if you guys saw but the completionist actually had a big long rant that was talking about how the youtube algorithm has um changed for the worse specifically in relation to um you know people like him quality content and so on and so forth and uh-huh. that if it wasn't for people like donating money and patreon and stuff he probably wouldn't be able to keep doing it that sucks. Now, you guys know who well, the let's take a look at his is, channel right? to see if that's a realistic claim <laughs> it is not yeah, it depends okay because it doesn't sound so very people, realistic for people that don't know the completionist um He's been on Game Grumps a couple of times now. He's fairly internet famous amongst the like Nintendo console crowd. Um you know, kind of kind of the peanut butter gamer. Huh. Uh yeah, this really like completionist people. only like, gets at least about once a week. The completionist only gets like four times the views per day that I get. Yeah. yeah. Two hundred thousand uh, views so for yeah, one he, video a he week. He probably needs to, uh, donations to keep going because he. Yeah, has I was going to say that's more, actually a pretty reasonable. They're, they're a multiple person <laughs> uh, channel. Um, is the completionist no, actually multiple person. people? Yeah. Yeah, the completionist he, is one person. He's one person. No, admittedly, he oh, also right, has the, guy, the separate... other guy's gone. Yeah, there, there was another guy for there years. There is a duo. There is a duo commentary channel, uh, Super Beard Bros, which gets like. Less than a million views per month. Um, and that's a separate thing. And he's also partnered on Twitch and streams presumably frequently. Uh-huh. Um, so I'm not, I'm, I'm having a hard time totally going with the whole like, what was me thing. However, his peak period was about 4 million views a month. And he's at about half that now. Yeah, he's got 2 million views a month. And they, they rent an office space that uh, they also rent out space to to Jesse, Cox, and Dodger. Yeah, it's like they have uh-huh. they have so like, overhead costs to deal with for what they do right now. Yeah, uh-huh. like I'm I'm sure it's expensive, but I was sitting there wondering, like you know, how, you know how how is this so substantiated? Like why is you know somebody is I I'm gonna say is venerated as the completionist, uh, talking about this sort of thing, and so uh you know obviously looked at that information, and a lot of it has to do with you know tags, title, and description, which for Keith and myself especially. Pretty bread and butter bird. I think you finally figured it out and started listening yep. to Keith. Okay, good. Isn't it interesting yeah, how, huge, how huge channels just completely skip over all, all elements of that oh, yeah. and they just assume they'll coast forever? Yeah, I mean, I've started. I mean, I've I've uh, automated the process of generating tax at this point because it's very formulaic. Oh, right, right. You did like the big old programming thing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I've automated um, thumbnails but, and tags. Uh, the other thing I was looking at was. Um, you know, most of the games he covers at this point are old. Or when he does cover them, they're a couple months old. Mm-hmm. And um, and so there's like a big angry Let's Play thread where everybody was calling him entitled. I was sitting there thinking about it, and I was like, you know, he's not half wrong about the whole, like, YouTube doesn't really help the big review thing. But it was just interesting to listen to somebody who, I mean, I would say is widely regarded as an expert in the field being really upset and then looking at his metrics and being like, I'm actually like, I, I get half of his views. Yeah. And he, he is, I'm 7.5% of his current size. And you don't uh, make which that was really much. weird to me. <laughs> All things considered. I mean, you, yeah. you probably uh, get more views per day than super bunny hop. Cause he's, uh, he's barely at a million. Yeah, maybe. Huh? For a month. I mean, let me look at, so that's that's like that all sounds insane to me to even think about that stuff. Like he's up there with two hundred twenty thousand subscribers and 
he's one of my favorite channels, and I'll probably catch up with him in a year. <laughs> uh, yeah, I get more views than... It's just the reviews don't get that many views overall because it's one video every week or slower than that in many cases, and you're just trying to make that work. Ooh. Okay, a couple of things. So How for starters, I actually uh, get more views and I'm growing faster than Super Bunny Hop, which is really weird. He's also <laughs> claimed by Maker, which means he's making substantially less than I am, too. I always uh, wonder about that with is... larger, larger audience, uh, channels, though, because on one hand, they're giving away a percentage of their profits, but on the other hand, supposedly those types of companies are also supposed to uh, help you sell better ads in the first place, so you're also making more money at the same time. Oh, so, that which it muddies me. the math. I mean, most bit. people have only really used them for like copyright protection, but that seems to have I kind mean, of died down a little bit. It's really too bad that you guys can't do ad targeting based upon what you have as your content because you can. I've come on and I've seen uh, like razor blade commercials for women, like you know, I'm oh. your Venus, that kind of stuff <laughs> going on. Uh huh. Well, part of how Google works is in AdSense and everything is that they, they, they're constantly watching you when you use your computer, basically, and they're targeting you with ads. There's websites you can go to where Google will, where you can try to t figure out what Google thinks you are, like what, what, what age and gender and everything they, oh, yeah, they, they think you are and your demographic. And for a lot of people, it's pretty mm -hmm. accurate based on how much they know about you, and then they target the ads directly to you for, Mac, for higher effectiveness. Well, thank goodness most of my ads tend to be movie trailers. Because uh, everyone watches yeah. movies. <laughs> unless you're oh, unless you're over good, 60, but... then you're screwed. No, nah, no, nah, specifically I get the sci-fi fantasy ones. Like, I've been seeing a lot of, oh, what was it? There's some new Camelot, like King Arthur, something of the sword that's been going on. Huh. Uh, definitely Star Trek. What other things? Some movie with uh, the guy who's the new Professor Xavier in X Men, but as some really creepy schizophrenic, I have like 27 personalities uh, kidnapping three girls for some nefarious purpose. I don't know. Interesting things, but supposedly that one's an M. Night Shyamalan movie. Uh, so, what I'm getting from so this is know. that your browser history is making Google think that you want to see stuff about kidnapping girls. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, no, no. This is. I told you the other ones were Star Trek and then the Camelot movie. <laughs> she so take, it must she have takes just been everything like... so literally. It's great. She does just everything. Like she has to respond to it like it was like it was a legitimate statement that I definitely meant. <laughs> Sorry. <That's just> <laughs> Yet, yeah, shall I am not legitimately accusing you of having kidnapping fantasies. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> or am I? We should name our podcast Mal. We should name our <laughs> podcast Kidnapping the, Fantasies. The Malcast. We should the just Mal name cast. the name of the podcast every episode. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, I don't think anybody has anything else we want to talk about today, right? Um, I was curious if you guys have looked at uh, the Great Whale Road at all. I haven't even uh, heard of it. That. Part of it, yeah. It's okay. I haven't played it yet, but I'm just taken aback by how quickly games I, like and I, to be fair i have not played it so i can't judge it for real but just on the outside i'm looking at what it looks like i'm always taken away by how quickly a game can look like it's derivative of, of another game because this game Ouch. looks like banner saga it does look weird so much like banner saga like the traveling is. is a profile shot of a ship going across water while the background scrolls behind it and stuff like that battles yep. take place mm -hmm. on a grid and, like, the story or any narrative that happens seem to be a series of, like, tapestry writing in the middle of the screen that pops up where you pick an option. And then, like, it, in the corner of the screen, it says how many days have passed. It's like... Yeah, and it's all, like, medieval and, like, clearly um, based off of, like, so it's, Viking it's stuff. It's what happens if you take an inferior development company and have them try and take, like, Banner Saga's kind of core logic and turn it into a settlement management sim but without doing any of the parts particularly well. It's it look Ouch. it looks bizarre. It, uh, also true. I like, did I did one episode of it. Um it it had kind of poor performance, which whatever. Um and then it proceeded it a little hard to, to do considering what it's doing on the screen. <laughs> I did that it performs it's mostly poorly. just that it, it it crashed and it forced me to start oh, over entirely. I thought you meant like low frame well. rate or something. Mm-mm. 
But, even when you um, go to town, it's like a static image of like your camp or whatever with a series of circles on it that represent little things you can click on to make stuff happen. Just like how you would like yeah. train and rest and and buy points or pass time in Banner Saga. That's, I mean, it, it's definitely like obvious that that's what they were going for. The problem is just ultimately the execution didn't match. Yeah. Um, I, I played for 40 minutes and didn't even encounter combat. I have no idea what the combat's like. Oh, it's a uh, it's a hex like... grid of the top down, and everyone looks like okay. a cardboard stand up on a plastic stand, like you're playing a tabletop game. And they yeah, I figured this they out. kind of slowly Jeez, slide this looks around. Exactly like the Banner Saga. They look, they look unlike unlike the Banner Saga though. The anim combat does not look animated. <laughs> yeah, it looks like wow. you're like... you might as well be rolling dice on a table. Mm -hmm. I just it it bothers me when I see stuff like this, just because when I look at it, I'm like this and everything about it just kind of feels cynical. Like, yeah, it's it a little bit soulless. Like, like, the whole thing that drew me to indie games in the first place, and well, back in the day when we were getting stuff for the first time, like Bastion or Fez or uh -huh. Braid. Uh, Braid and World Limbo and all these, yeah, World of Goo, uh, Insanely Twisted Shadow Planets from Dust. That was not an indie game, that's not a Ubisoft game, but just these smaller yeah. projects, like, they all felt like a crazy thing that was either a revitalization of a genre that hasn't been around forever or just someone's unique vision. And I get depressed when the indie market of all places turns into this place where your people almost look like they're just cynically remaking somebody else's product. And mm. yeah, like very like, good entry, dude. Very good entry. Like even the like they they barely even changed the theme in this case. Like they're whaling, of course, but like they just look like Vikings. All they needed to do, all they, they needed to do, like Vikings, if they wanted man. to make about whalers, was do it on the moon, and then yeah. it would have been perfect. <laughs> yeah, moon whalers. I mean, but never you, you say out that now. jokingly, but, like, I totally would play, like, a whalers campy on the moon. ass, obviously Futurama-inspired, uh, <laughs> like, moon viking game. In the 1960s, and the food shortages required all the astronauts to go to the moon to do their whaling. Like, that would like, be awesome. Have, have you guys seen anything from, um, oh, what's it called? Uh, I played it recently, wonderful game. Uh, SteamWorld Heist. Seen any of that or no? Uh, I saw uh, previously recorded playing we gonna it. Weren't we going to play that together, so Wander? It looked like a turn-based no. 2D game. I think it also launched Steam on 3DS. SteamWorld Heist is single player. Oh. I personally only yeah, played sorry. Dig. So, at the end of SteamWorld Dig, world blows up, spoilers, <laughs> um... World blows up. The game they was like a copy it. of Super Mother Loads, so that does not surprise me. Right. Uh, yeah, I mean, it was kind of like Terraria E with like sort of a Metroidvania ish. You, oh, you system, haven't played Super Mother Load, have you? Whoa, I just suddenly no. realized like the Terraria if you play Super, Super Mother Load connection. Yeah, if you play huh. Super Mother Load, you'll realize how some, of, how some of these games are just that game, especially Steam World Dig. It's actually That's kind of weird. All right. But so, um, so for End of Steam World Dig, world blows up and they immediately transition over to a uh uh well not immediately seeing as it took them a while to come up with the game but steam world heist is like a um it's a uh it's an XCOM like worms fusion yep which uh -huh. is really strange and the entire point of it is like you're kind of the uh robin hood protecting um moisture not moisture farmers but you know uh, moisture mi miners, effectively. It's really strange. And it's a decent uh, example. And... That game's a decent example of somebody actually having an idea they want to express, because it's got all these weird little quirks, like being able to shoot people's hats off to collect them, or being able to bounce ricochet, yeah. ricochet shots around because they're it's lasers. It's so good. And it, it was, like, weirdly fresh for something that was so derivative of two different games that I really enjoy. Um, which but I was really surprised they mix two games, that's how you find, like, new shit. Yeah. But yeah. So. But, like, it didn't feel derivative. It didn't feel like if you just kind of, like, hack-jobbed Worms yeah. and, and XCOM together, it actually felt like a legitimate thing. I and mean, I've I was... always wanted to combine FTL with a JRPG, like Final Fantasy. Oh. Because I knew uh, that I played that something like that recently. It was fucking atrocious. It was, <laughs> really? it was a zombie survival game. Oh, kind of played like FTL. Uh -huh. oh. But with a Final Fantasy style combat system, uh, complete with prepackaged Unity assets. Oh, and, there's a uh, problem. Yeah, every word of this is bad. Yeah, I don't actually, like any of the things you're saying. 
Stop uh, saying I them. Really bad about it. <laughs> I felt really bad about it. I played it and I was like, I think this is one of the first games that I regret trying to make an episode on. <laughs> like, there are some games where I'm just like... I thought you did release it. Was it this one set in Canada? Fucking... No, no, you're thinking Death Road to Canada. That's a unique, interesting one. <laughs> okay. Um... What was the first no, game they, you I completely don't... gave up on trying to play without even putting out a video for it? Uh, there was... Mm-hmm. We did that with the Viking game. Banjo... Viking Remember game. that, Wander? The, it was like... Uh, zombie God, Vikings? What was it? Uh, no, we, not Zombie Vikings. That one's good. Well, we Banjo, we, we sold... I, I gave that game back uh, after the first episode and we never played it again. <laughs> I'm trying to remember. Was it... It was the ones where, like, we could go into, like, a cave and, like, I don't know, man. Like, everybody was, like, walking. It was it was a side-scrolling game where we were both Vikings. Oh! Uh, Niflheim. Yeah, Niflheim. Fuck that game. It was did you, awful. Did you ever uh, <laughs> upload that? I never uploaded oh, yeah. it. It's on YouTube. <laughs> Our <laughs> raging... So, oh, the realization about Niflheim. Moment. It's launched with, uh, it's launched with online multiplayer, but the, the enemies weren't aware of Bird's existence. Yeah, they couldn't so fight I would me. stand behind Bird, and Bird would just wail on them. Now, mind you, all of the enemies from the get-go are incredibly meaty and boring oh, no. to fight. Yeah, they're just um, they're, they're damage sponges. So it would take, like, two minutes to kill a troll, and then we get the loot, and it would be like, well, I guess this is it. Now, you're also playing as these actually well-illustrated giant Viking guys who look like they're teetering forward at all times. They've got, like, the tiniest <laughs> dips ever, and they're, uh-huh. like, super top-heavy looking, and it's just, like, it was this weird mishmash of, like, relatively beautiful artwork and yeah. utterly uninspired, lackluster game design. And, like, I think Sweet. Splattercat had, like, five videos on it, and I was just like, how do you play this game? <laughs> I did, like, one by myself when I was bored, mm-hmm. and then brought Bird on, and it was just garbage. And it was like, how? What? The answer is a paycheck, Wander. A paycheck is how Splatter Cat like, plays those games. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's true. Mm-hmm. Like Magisite <laughs> plays better than this thing. It That's does. Hard. Something, yeah. something those games that play worse than Magisite? Oh yeah. yeah. This oh, is no. I mean, this is real garbage. It, it's netcode was at least like alright, a thing, but at the same it's time. It's netcode didn't recognize me as a player to <laughs> fight. Oh well, like, yeah, but it didn't kick you out of the session or like warp you out of the world. That's four like times the net code equivalent of you're playing the game and you're just streaming the game to to Bird so he can play along too. But it's not yeah, yeah. Stre- But then the, it, like, commu- the is not the communicating one time back. You and I, the it's one like time a level above. Play, like, uh, you're playing a single player fall. game and you give me a controller so I feel like I'm playing along. Yeah, it's like you're doing the video game equivalent of tracing over his drawing. <laughs> Except for like. To be honest, Bird ended up doing more than I did because yeah. the player was character invincible. was like super vulnerable all the time. <laughs> so I was just like, "Bird, you do it," and, and he did, and he killed everything for me. And it's just like, I feel an intense disappointment. I we returned that game in thirty minutes of buying it. I couldn't it. return it. They gave me a press copy, so it was like, "Well, I guess <laughs> oh, well, I can't that return this for thing you. I didn't pay for. Yeah. What do I do?" Well, I returned it. it so for me, what happened is I tried to play Ether One on the PlayStation uh-huh. Four, and uh, had several oh. bad impressions very quickly. I, I was doing this because stuff like Talos Principle and Grimrock were doing well, and this was before Witness, but it was why I played Witness too. Is some people like to watch me play puzzle games, and I want to play Ether One. I gave it a shot, and like I just vaguely missed like or something. It's a puzzle island of some kind, and uh, I gave it a shot. First of all, within five minutes, the game crashes on PS4, straight to the dashboard, and I just relaunch the game. Then I get to this reception area where there's a little sign-in sheet where you can sign in at the receptionist, and they didn't properly implement it for the to have a in-game keyboard for a controller on the PS4. Uh-huh. So the keyboard, uh-huh. the, a, a, screen, a screen pops up that has text on uh, all the little buttons you can press and stuff like that, and it seems to expect you to just press keyboard buttons on a real keyboard so what i found is if you hit a it would select the current letter on the keyboard but you'd have to then uh hit hit erase to unerase it and then you had to press oh. left right up down or whatever in whatever direction over and over again to try to get the letter you're trying to be at because there's no reticle to say what icon what letter you're currently you highlighting just, you just gave up on it <laughs> like you you're like tr- i'm not getting past the screen you had to trial and error type your entire name out if you wanted to type your name on this thing 
because of the fact that like you we wouldn't tell you what letter you're currently highlighting so you had to click on a letter and then then backspace it oh, out over and over again God. and then keep feeling your way on the keyboard uh but i got past that and i moved on to the island and tried to move around and ultimately why i gave up on the game was because i like i can't even judge the game's puzzles or anything to know what if it's good at what it's trying to do because i i play games blind a lot just to yeah. and yeah. just experience them from the get-go because i don't like knowing about stuff that much in advance i couldn't uh -huh. find puzzles i was just walking around like paths and like and buildings and rooms and doors. It was doors like the and worst witness. Then. I was just looking at scenery and I'm like, I can't find what. It was like the either. worst missed witness. Yeah, thing. I was just going crazy trying to find out what. Like, obviously the missed. Like, obviously witness is super obvious because it has puzzle panels. You literally like drag a line around and stuff like that. And mist is mm -hmm. more obscure than that. But yeah. like, I couldn't find the things that you were trying to solve. Like, I couldn't, you couldn't find, find like, the game in the game. I couldn't find anything. The best I could do is that I found a couple of like. Like luggage tumbler like locks on doors where you where you put, put in a, like a number code, but I didn't yeah. have even the slightest hint after a bunch of running around, what even like thing I would even use as a reference to try to use a number to find to, to like, input it as a code. So mm -hmm. after like an hour, I just kind of I just get, I just stopped and I deleted the game from my PS4 and deleted the footage and it just never it just never went up on on the internet. <laughs> And then, because I'm an asshole, I then took it to uh, Andrew for Sad Games and uh, had him play it. <laughs> Did he do fair any well better? Well done. Not really, no. But it was really funny to watch him be mad at this game that I already knew was frustrating because of playing it myself. Because <laughs> it is... It just dumps you on an island. And I'm... Okay, I, like, I'm, I'm generally okay with figuring out obscure puzzles and stuff like that. But I go crazy when I literally am like, I don't know where the puzzle is or what the thing is i'm trying to go like there's 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 intuitive puzzles and un unintuitive pu puzzles an unintuitive puzzle is if like there's a painting of a woman and if you press her right cheek uh, a lighthouse on the opposite side of this of the island will suddenly start Ooh, working I or some like nonsense to do that like that's oh, that, I, 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 just, I made all of that up just now but like that kind of stuff kind of happens in games oh so, no that mm -hmm. happens all the time it's like crouching it's by hates, a cliff uh... at deborah's cliff in castlevania 2 like i was gonna say crouching at the cliff for 10 seconds yeah yep. it's that kind of nonsense like Wait, an intuitive puzzle something? is hey there's a door how do I open that door? There's something behind it, so clearly I want to open that door. There, I have a goal. Now I figure out how to open that door. And like you backspace. Well, you have you to. You have to, to figure out your solution. To, when you're making a but puzzle game, you have to provide cause and effect. Yeah. Very right, obviously within a short window. Yeah. Is that they could scatter clues and answers to a puzzle all around, that but so when you obvious. saw the puzzle in the flesh. Yeah. You could look at it and be like, oh, wait, I understand that, you know, back in this other area, there was something related to this. Yep. So that's why it was always good to keep, like, a notebook. Or in later games, yeah. they actually implemented a camera system. Yep. So you could take snapshots of things. But, yeah, I absolutely love the one in Riven. Yeah. With, like, there were animals that made noises. And you found balls that you could spin that had a symbol associated with them, but they made the noise when they spun. And then you mm -hmm. realized you had to play a, a weird game to figure out what the symbols meant and they were numbers. And then you used all of that information to solve a puzzle later where it had diagrams of the animals and you knew that the numbers meant what order you had to press them in. And it was just like, yes, like that makes sense. And the way that you found out the number system was by playing a children's game that also tied into, like, the uh, culture, mm. where they were essentially ruled by uh, the main characters. Like, not the one that you play as, but the main uh, Atris, the man that you often speak with in the games. His father was ruling this one world named Riven with an Iron Fist, and he f fancied himself a god. And there was sort of like a tribal population there. Uh, and he had these creatures called Works, I believe. And they looked like a cross between a marlin fish and a walrus and a beluga, if you could try to imagine that. And uh, apparently they would feed dissenters to them by lowering them slowly into the water. And you played this game that was sort of a mock-up of the device that was literally outside the schoolhouse. And you would roll something akin to a spinner. 
and it would come up with the symbol and you would just see how many ticks the uh, person, like the little wooden character, would get lowered towards the very hungry wooden wark. And I was just like, wow, that's deep. Also scary, but it tells you a lot. And also it was fun encountering the animals. Science. I think I lost you at some point. <laughs> I was so lost. I'm not all sure that. what story what? just happened. <laughs> I'm not. Do I, do I have to? Did I have to tell it in like no, 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 chronological no, no, order? No, I think we're just kind of podcast it out. <laughs> I think we are, and also, Shell, your stories. You lack you lack the uh, the basic human attribute of brevity. I know I always lack Aww. brevity. <laughs> So, <laughs> that's why I'd be given an assignment in school, and I'd write, you know, they'd be like, can you please write, you know, a couple pages for your short story assignment? I'd write 20. I'd be like, yes, this is a masterpiece. Oh, and your no. teacher's like, good God, I can't read this. Uh, oh, God. No, no, no. They, they... <laughs> well, when I had to do handwritten assignments, sometimes they would grade me well, because they're like... We know you write so well. It's just too bad I can't read your handwriting, but I'll give you this and just type this out for me and give it to me later. And I'm like, ah, why do you have such like small chicken scratch handwriting? Now read it. Read it all. But all right, yeah. we should probably wrap this up though to uh, <laughs> move on to the as a closing thought on the, stuff. on the idea of like these puzzle things. What I'm finding is that there's. Because, like, obviously a lot of these 3D puzzle games like Portal, Talos Principle, Witness, they establish a very specific rule set, and they kind of stick mm -hmm. with that rule set forever. Because you otherwise you your player can get lost so easily in 3D space, because doing anything in 3D makes it easier to get lost. And I'm thinking of the, the two variety, games I've though. played recently that constantly have brand new puzzles at around every corner, and, like, everything's changing, and you have to sort of intuit your sol solution based on new stimuli over and over again. They were both 2D because they were both they were they were called Inside and Semiros Three. Like I think that's that's how you get things, uh, how you get this to work. This weird form of like of not yeah. actually having one constant concrete structure for your puzzles is to have your fixed screen space where here's your weird features and people have to observe these things because that's just what the screen is and you can work within that confine and you can make your you can keep having these intuitive brand new puzzles over and over again. Because if the moment's in 3D, you can't control where people are looking. And then it becomes a nightmare right. of, like, will they even notice the five elements that inform them what the puzzle even is in this room? And that's yeah, probably so an element of, of what happened to me in Ether 1. I'm like, I this is a dock. Sure a is lot nice of games dock will do of things. <laughs> like, a lot of, like, 3D games, um, what they'll do is, like, when you walk into a room for the first time, it'll take the camera controls away from you. Oh, yeah. And it'll kind of do, like, these cinematic pans. Every single game just, on the Nintendo 64. Just so <laughs> happened to conveniently show you, like, all the elements of the puzzle. Yeah. And, like, stuff like that. Or, I mean, nowadays it's a little bit more intuitive, because usually it'll be like you open up a door into a hallway, and then in the center of the room right in front of you is, like, the puzzle. And, like, you're naturally guided visually and spatially, like, to go through the puzzle in a certain way. Wait, are they really... Chat's making something called filibuster, where it's like, Shell likes to talk. I don't know if I could ever, ever <laughs> perform a filibuster. <laughs> it, 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 I've, I've noticed this happen in, uh, what was it, Congress or the House or something? Yeah. But they have to, what, stand for 16 hours? What's the, what's the time? Oh, the time, it's it's not the time doesn't long. matter. What a filibuster yeah. is, is when you want to avoid having a vote in congress or something like that because oftentimes because you know you're going to lose or something so what they do is they waste time because you have to give people the floor if they want to talk and it requires a mm -hmm. ridiculous majority of votes in order to break in order to kick somebody off the stage when they're talking for congress basically so what people yeah. do is they go up and, with like a storybook and song lyrics and all this other bullshit and they just talk about nonsense and they read Dr. Seuss, and they talk about their World of Warcraft character for like 10 Ooh, hours but, and yeah. just waste was, time because it's like I, a horrible, like fucked up part of our government. I, I always thought that they were, they had to write an immensely long essay and have a number of speakers. No, it come can up be whatever the same thing. They can oh, just no, say no, no. nonsense. You can say whatever and they you want. Do. 
You can even do uh, silent filibusters where you don't even need to talk. Yeah. Which defeats the whole purpose of the filibuster. Yeah. <laughs> I just remember seeing one where, like, the guy had to talk for that much time, but then also stand the entirety of the time. Like, if you take your seat, it's Oh, yeah, you're moot. standing up yeah, at a pew at the front of Congress because you're addressing Congress because everyone's supposed to be able to talk because that's part of democracy and yeah. everything. The, the but most, people um, use it by just yeah. staying there just because the rule for stopping somebody from talking is, like... I don't remember the exact rule, but something absurd, like a three-fourths majority of voting just to stop someone, so they can just put all of Congress on pause yeah. all day, basically. That's why when you hear uh, hear about elections uh, with, like, new senators or congressmen or whatever, uh, the concept of being filibuster-proof is particularly advantageous for... Yeah, if you, you have know, a 60% majority, the other side can't even filibuster you. Oh, yeah. Something mm -hmm. like that. Right. Because you can just vote out people are filibustering. I've never seen any reason why it should exist, really. Uh, it's usually used very shittily. Like, the most yeah. famous example of the filibuster is when Strom Thurmond uh, filibustered for over 24 hours against the Civil Rights Act. Yeah, like, at the end of the day, you just you discuss the topic and then you vote on it, and that should really hold, that should be the whole process, more or less. Ted Cruz filibustered uh, Obamacare for 20 hours or something like that. Wow. Very famously as well, very recently. Uh, which is, like, one of the longest filibusters ever performed. It's, like, top, like, five or something like that. Yeah, that's, like, Again, that's like a few steps kind of away from being... a shitty purpose. <laughs> yeah, that's a, st there that's a few ones... steps away from being, like, a South Korean kid dying playing South uh, a StarCraft in a cafe or something. Yeah, Like, that's that length of filibuster of, like, how does human continue to human that long while standing there? Yeah. <laughs> uh... Yeah, I mean, we think that how we're pretty inundated with video games <laughs> in the United States, but I wonder how things are in South Korea. They probably just plug up like a bear. You know, I wonder if there's a special filibuster diet. Like, you walk into a specific diner uh, in <laughs> D.C. Bird, go figure plug. this out for me. Well, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's like a specific, like, wheat pasta diet or some nonsense <laughs> like that. And it just oh, we gotta like cut the days. recording. <laughs> no, yeah, we, we do. don't. <laughs> oh, yes, we do. All right, welcome. Uh, thank you for watching episode two of Butt Plug Podcast. Yeah. You're welcome. <laughs>